welcome everyone to this track guide of Circuit Gilles Villeneuve uh, around Montreal, as people may refer it to the Canadian Grand Prix or know it as, which F1 race round. Um, this is a track guide in regards to the Formula 3 car. Um, I really love this car. It's my favourite series of in iRacing. I spend a lot of time in it recently. Um, gained a lot of i rating too. So close to that 2K i rating. Um, but yeah, I've, I've gained a lot of time through practice and just uh, I've got a new set of pedals as well. So a number of varying factors, but I wanted to give back to you guys um, where I've found time. Um, and if I can help you guys take time off your lap times um, and find that little bit of extra speed around the track and, and make you more consistent, then you're going to put a smile on my face and, and my, my job's done. Now, I'm not the fastest driver by any means. Um, so this is just kind of to make you more consistent um, and to help, help you guys out. I'm just trying to give back. I'm trying to give back to the community because <laughs> I don't see really any track guides out there for, for F3. You may see the old hot, you may see the, the hot lap on YouTube or Twitch or something, but no one really kind of talks it through. Um, and it's kind of difficult to to see where specifically they're braking and, and things like that. So I thought an actual drive-through, slow drive-through, um, showing you my braking points, showing you where uh, my turning points are, what kind of bits to avoid, curbs to avoid, and, and so forth, and what to look out for um, would be would be good for you guys to know. And, and yeah, like I said, hopefully it takes um, time off your lap times. Now, I just wanted to let you guys know that the setup I'm using is from Craig's Setup Shops. Um, I think it's Jack Sedgwick, um, so shout out to Jack. Um, he is a really fast driver in F3. I think he's got a pro license, a world license. He's like over 7K I rating, um, so he's seriously quick. There, the set. He's the setups I use, and he's um, laps, he's recorded laps, um, which are downloadable of Craig's setup shops online are the ones that I kind of use for, for reference points. I never get anywhere near his times, but they they are a massive help. So um, it is a subscription-based service, but totally worth it because I haven't got the time to to learn all the, all the little bits about what goes into a setup of a car and so forth. I know kind of basics, but um, yeah, purely due to time. I'll let I'll let Jack do it or the guys at Craig Setup Shops do it. So definitely worth checking them out. There'll be a link in the description below. So check down there. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it and head into that guide. So it'll be a slow walkthrough guide with a couple of laps at the end to see it in full flow of what I'm talking about. Remember to hit the like and subscribe subscribe button. Enjoy. So here we are, guys. We're at the start finish straight or start finish line, shall we say? Now. As we head down into the first corner, slowly, I'm going to talk you through my braking points, where my turning points, and where to avoid the curbs and so forth. Now, as we come down to the first corner, it's a left hander, we have the one marker on the right hand side. Now, generally, you're coming down to this in about fifth or sixth gear, and I will brake at this one marker or just before it and I will brake all the way down into third gear. Now I will try and a little bit of trail braking come around this left hander, hit this apex in third gear and then quickly change down into second for the next. Now I just want to make a point that this curve on the left hand side you do not want to go over it because the car will bottom out and it can make you spin and in severe cases give you damage especially with the damage model on the F3 cars so yeah avoid the inside of that that curve you want to stay to the outside of the apex so as we come round we're shifting down into seconds on the brakes hard on the brakes and as I found out quite recently actually I used to take this corner in second but I shift down into first because it just allows me to get the car to turn in so you quickly go down from third to second to first and you stick tight to the apex 
and slowly, not quickly, this is important, slowly put your foot on the gas to get that acceleration out of the corner. Because if you put your foot down on the gas instantly, you're gonna to get too much power to the rear wheels and the car's just gonna spin out. And then you shift up the gears up to the next corner. Now, slightly round to the right-hand side, we have our braking markers on the left, three, two, and one. Now this is the first of three chicanes. Now, as we just head back slightly, I'll be braking, I'll, I'll be just shifting up to fifth gear before this braking marker, and then I shift, I brake just before, all the way down into first, uh, no, sorry, third, and turn in, and once again, I make sure, ideally not to run over the inside of this kerb. You can do it, but it really does unsettle the car. Um, I find it's best to, to just stick as tight to that apex as you can without going onto the meshy type stuff, if you can see that. That's the benefit of having VIs, but I can just lean out of the car and show you. <laughs> Now, as you're going in through third gear, you're you're kind of on that half throttle. Um, you don't want to be on full throttle because once again, you're just going to end up driving that car straight into the wall in front of you. If you're brave enough, you can take it onto the grass slightly and cut cut the curb. Um, it's a very fine line between getting a one X and, of course, losing control of the car. But it does give you um, an extra tenth or so. And as you get over that curb, you're pretty much on full throttle, making the most of this apex without <laughs> crashing into the wall, which uh, I've kissed, kissed that wall plenty of times before. Now, as you come round in these high downforce cars, as the F3s are, you can pretty much stick it full throttle, well, you are full throttle, all the way around, tight to this line. And we come up to our second chicane. Now, second chicane, see the end of the white wall on the right hand side you can pretty much see where all the tire marks are but I will use the end of this white wall pretty much as a braking point I break just after it quite hard and I'm shifting all the way down into second gear now this is a bit of a tricky one I really struggled with this uh, with this chicane, or was particularly the start of the chicane when I first started driving these cars and first come onto iRacing, because your instinct is to take it early, uh, like a normal apex. But if you do that, you go onto the the mesh here, and your car bottoms out. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, sounds horrible, and it can spin your car out, completely throws you out. You lose so much speed, and yeah, worst case, you spin. Oh, that doesn't sound nice. I've never heard that and never gone over that that slowly before. But yeah, this is an apex really that you want to take a lot later than your instincts tell you to. And take it a lot slower than you think as well. Um, you can kind of, these, these next two chicanes, you, can, you have to go in slower. It's in slow, out fast. Um, it's definitely the motto here. So we go in, we kind of come to where it's kind of following the black tyre marks really in the road. And you take a late apex, going around careful on the throttle here. You do not want full throttle straight out of the chicane, as tempting as it is, because the car, nine times out of ten, or ten times out of ten, you'll end up in that wall on the left hand side, or in the barriers there. Now, you're on about half, well, nearly full throttle, three quarters throttle really as you're getting out of here, especially when, when the tyres are warm, you can be a bit more confident on the throttle. And what you want to do in particular is avoid, once again, this kerb. As tempting as it is to ride that apex, you really want to stay off of it because, once again, the car bottoms out, bottoms out and your revs just hit a limiter and you lose so much speed. So as tight to it as possible, on full throttle now, trust the downforce in the car, trust the grip, get as close to this wall as you can really, without crashing into it, 
and we head down this long straight into an extra cane. And you have your braking markers. Now, you're pretty much coming up to this corner in sixth gear. And this is the second chicane. Sorry, not the second chicane, the third chicane. Now, this, this is a particular chicane that you really need to go quite slowly into. It's so easy to go, oh, I can go around this a lot faster. But you just, you'll lose it because this chicane has the dreaded sausage curbs, which are an absolute nightmare for F3 cars. Um, specifically when you've got the new damage model and going over one can just mean a broken suspension or a broken front wing. Now, I'm generally braking on the seconds. Um, if I'm feeling a bit braver, I, I brake a little bit afterwards. It depends how confident I am in my braking, but I think a safe bet is to start braking at the second at the two marker. Now as we come in this you really kind of want to be turning in let's go back you kind of want to be turning in just after the grass starts and um, because it's quite easy like I said to go into this too quickly and to miss miss the apex and this is probably a different <laughs> completely different to the previous chicane where you have to turn in take a late apex this is pretty much an early apex but you have to be careful with the sausage curbs now as you turn in you can you can take this first you can take these sausage curbs if you want to but please don't go over them fast because uh, it will just throw the car out and you're coming into this in third gear so we go all the way back to the two marker. So you're coming down into this into sixth. Brake, shift down into third. And then you're starting to turn probably just after the grass starts. You can ride that sausage curb if you want, and you can ride this sausage curb as well if you want, but it's it's not ideal. I'd, I'd avoid them if necessary, um, if you can. And then fully on the gas, down to the next corner, down to the hairpin. Now you're probably going to get up to fifth, maybe maybe reach six if you've got the uh, if you've got a slipstream. And once again, you want to be using that two marker on the left hand side. Now, I brake kind of just after it, and I'm as I brake just after it, I shift all the way down into first. And I generally start to turn in at this marker on the left hand side, this 10 marker. And I keep nice and tight to it. Now, this is where so many people go wrong, is they get on the power too soon. And if anyone who's raced their free here knows, even in GT3 or GTE, people get on the power too soon and the car just gets, there's too much power to the rear wheels and the car just spins. Um, so as, as the car faces the wall, you just as you're turning you just kind of want to start easing on the throttle and then once you've got that car relatively straight pointing down towards the straight that's when you can really get on the throttle so the key to that hairpin is to ease your way into the throttle shift down to first I mean I've seen some people take second but personally I like first um, as it just allows me to get that car turning in and um, with the F3 cars you can shift down a lot quicker um, than you can in a GTE or GT3 car so as we come down the long straight you're definitely hitting sixth gear so you'll be all the way in sixth and I will break at the two mark hole just just before it really just before it because you have two of the biggest sausage curbs here and they're an absolute nightmare because these are a race ender right here now I'm shifting all the way down into 
fed. So we'll go back. So, coming down a long straight, in sixth gear, and I brake just before the two, down into third, and I do not, not want to be hitting these curbs, ideally. Um, you can get away with clipping them, but you really kind of have to lift off the throttle and if you see me do it in any of my races it's not intentional at all i'd ideally like to avoid them completely so you want to keep it as tight as you can in third gear going through them and then on the accelerator as soon as you come out of the chicane getting tight to the water champions and full throttle down the straight and that's pretty much my guide to Montreal Circuit Villeneuve. Now what we'll do, we'll do a couple of fast laps or fast air laps so that you can see that in action. Here we go guys. Down to the first corner. Break on the one. Down into first, keep it tight. Broken on one again. Tie over those curbs without going onto the meshy bit. Lay apex. Slow, really slow the car down. Avoid the curb. Slow on the throttle on the way out. Break on the two. Turning just after the grass. I just rid one of those sausage curbs, but they're the good ones we can ride. Slowly round here. Probably a little bit too slow. But I broke on the two, just after the two marker there. Now we're down the long straight. And we're going to break just before the two marker and try and avoid those sausage curbs. We didn't. That wasn't my plan. That wasn't intentional. <laughs> so avoid that messy part, keep it tight. all the way around this corner, trust the downfall, break on the white, lay apex, Should be a bit faster this lap, but this isn't hot lapping, this is just me showing you guys what I spoke about in the guide. So we're breaking just before the two. Down into third. Ideally not hitting those sausage curbs. And across the line. That was better. That was better, 135, I could go a lot faster. I haven't got, I've got quite a bit of fuel on the car. And I wasn't trying to go amazingly fast either, I wasn't pushing it. That was just me st sticking to my guide. But hopefully we'll make you guys go a bit faster, take some seconds or time off your lap times. Please use these laps as a reference. Also remember that 
these lap times I've just set are in an 18 degree track temperature. Now this week it seems like the, the track temperature is varying from either 18 degrees to 23 degrees. So that's, that's quite a bit of a difference. Um, I've noticed it's, it, it's around about a second a lap. Um, so it's a second lap slower if it's 23 degrees Celsius um, compared to 18. So um, don't stress yourself if you're not doing faster lap times as fast lap times as you normally would be because it's more than likely that the track temperature is just hotter. All right, guys. Well, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I hope that helps you all. I'll see you again for the next one. Bye.